Now we're going to talk about microfilm. We think about all of those issues that we already talked about plus some. One thing that you can think about is, do you have the film already? Is it something that you have, or is this something that you need to secure from someone? Um, often with newspaper content, the people that want to do the digitization are not the people that own the film. I've, I've seen that happen numerous times. Can you partner with them, and do you have access to that film? If you have the film, do you know what's on that film? And that's not necessarily a given. We have big surprises as we go down the road with this microfilm. You know, it all depends on what work has been done in the past as to what you face with. This really can be a, a great benefit, actually. We've had some really great surprises, and we've had some really terrible surprises. So you can't underestimate the value of looking at your film and knowing what is on that film. Do you still have microfilm equipment? Many programs really participated in national newspaper program where institutions were going out and microfilming the papers of their state. And so there is still microfilm around. A lot of those microfilming programs are on the decline. The equipment, you know, may still be there and there are often really good optics on that equipment. So that's something that you could use to leverage, give yourself another way of Imaging. Image to digitize condition of that film is really important as you're choosing which collection to digitize. If it's going to present a lot of challenges, you may not want to choose your worst film. Newer film that meets standards is often, it's better, it's clearer, it's more complete, the images are easier to digitize. You know, there are many issues with old film if it's not been stored properly or if it was just not done to a standard. In some of the episodes of this uh, tutorial, the other things that we address, you'll see examples of kind of crazy things with old film. And so that's something to consider as you look at it, because that will, it will slow you down as you, go, as you move forward. Then that access to the master negative. You're not going to be digitizing from that master negative, but you don't also don't want to be digitizing from a service copy. You will make a print master from your master negative and then digitize from that. But having access to that master negative is key. The service copies that are out there, you know, often will have libraries contact us saying, we've got this film that we want to digitize. Can you do it? Because they know that we do that. But, you know, it's a service copy. They don't own the rights to it. It's, you know, something they bought. It's scratched. That's not a good, you know, candidate for, for digitization. Then there are additional technical challenges with film, you know, is it, do you have the ability to assess good film? Can you look at it and tell if it's good? Can you do the density readings and make sure that your digital content is going to be robust, clear, good digital content? It can be faster. You can scan very quickly from a roll of film. So if you have film in your collection, that is one great way to add in digital content at, at a much faster pace because film scanners scan so quickly. And then additionally, the film can serve as a preservation copy. That's an added benefit. And as we think about repositories going forward, this is less of an issue um, in some ways. However, it is a great preservation medium. Film is a great preservation medium. It's been uh, around for a long time. There are standards. If it's stored properly, it can be a really good preservation copy, particularly as we're in this transition from kind of analog to digital world. As we build up our repository infrastructures and make sure that they are in robust and secure, that film can be a really great backup. As you think about digitizing from microfilm, are you going to do your books, book content? Are you going to do newspapers? I would advise anyone to start with books before newspapers. Newspapers just have a lot of inherent challenges when you think about it that books don't have. Books you know, are bound, they are, you know, rarely are missing pages. But newspapers, you have many issues with completeness, with the dates being correct, with reading order on the columns. Um, are you going to do it at a, a page level? Or are you going to do an article level? There are lots of additional challenges that you have to think through with digitizing newspapers. But you just have to weigh all those factors, all of the factors that we've talked about, to help you make your decisions. Don't limit yourself. Think about not just your users that you have now, but your potential users, the users down the road, users that are around the world from you. Don't just think about what you have now, but think of what can you leverage as you move forward. 
Think strategically. If you can think of a collection that will encourage a large donation, for instance, um, that might be one to pick. It goes to the top because of that. If you can think of something that will earn you political goodwill, um, we did a collection of the Board of Trustees minutes as one of our initial digitization projects because that gave us a lot of goodwill with the Board of Trustees, obviously, with the university administration. It gave us a public relations opportunity to show off a little bit. It provided access to a collection that was underutilized and inaccessible. So all of those things together really made this a good choice for moving forward. You often can think about your collections, what you have, and what could you could leverage into something bigger and better. Look for those opportunities. As we were thinking about digitization, we had done some grant projects, some pilot projects, and then the National Digital Newspaper Program came along. Were we 100% prepared to do that? I wouldn't say that we were 100% prepared. We thought we were. We learned a lot, It was, but we were able to use that opportunity to prove ourselves, to move forward, and to do something that would move us from just a project-based operation to an actual program. I would encourage you to think about all of these things. Think about those basic skills that you have. Think about what's in your collection, who's going to use it, what it can do for you, and what are the technical challenges, and then use those to choose content that makes sense to help you prioritize it.